Today I'll show you how I took the rescue project through from a prototype to an online schematic to PCB design to getting PCBs made and having a working product in my hands. If you didn't already see part one of this project, I'll link it down below. It has all the coverage of all the key details of these two units, an air unit and a ground unit. But long story short, I had some prototypes in my hand that were breadboard done and I wanted to move through to get some professional PCBs made. I'll definitely get some flack in the comments for using fritzing here, but it was the program I was familiar with at the time. In an upcoming video, we're going to flip this over to KiCad and have a little bit more success, much more professional looking schematic. But long story short, anyone can use this or any other CAD or EDA program that they desire. Once I had the schematic laid out, you go over to the board view and it transfers all the components for you and we just have to route the board. Pretty straightforward. Start with signal wires first, powers and grounds last. I do the signal wires on one side, powers and grounds on the other. It just makes things easy. This is a really simple board, but I'm going to try and keep it really, really small. There are tons of tutorials online to teach you how to use whatever EDA program you like. Uh, don't do your schematic this way. This is not industry convention. Basically what you usually want to do is come in from the left with your inputs and outputs on the right. Powers at the top, grounds at the bottom. Uh, keep your power supply in one area. You're going to see that in an upcoming video when I do the KiCad version. Some pretty easy routing and some ground fills on both sides and we have a PCB that we can send out. But this is a really small PCB so what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to panelize it or have our board house panelize it for us. We're going to be using PCB way and today I'm going to do the panelizing for them. The process is super easy. I'll link Brian Locke's video down below where he did a tutorial on how to use this open source tool. Basically, you lay out the files and join them all with little mouse bytes together and it'll generate the Gerbers. The Gerber files are what we need to send to our board house. It's what tells them how to make the boards. It's a series of different files of the design and where to put the drill holes. Once the tool was finished, it even kicks out these cool photos to give us a preview of what our boards should end up looking like when we send these Gerbers off to be made. I'm pretty happy with this. I think this will work. I put a little hole in the boards as well so I can reach the reset switch on the ESP8266 and I think this will do the job. And off to PCBWay.com. They are the supporter of all my episodes here, all my YouTube videos. Go to upload the boards. It's super simple. Most of the default selections can be left alone or you can customize it for whatever style of board you want. I wanted black boards, a black matte finish here in this case, and most of the rest I can leave alone. Uh, if you wanted to have them panelize it, you would select it on the main page here too. But since we panelized it for them, we're going to be sending them the complete files. We save things and we wait to hear back. What they'll do is they'll do a quick check on these and make sure that they're capable of being manufactured, make sure there's no problems. If there is, they'll let you know or they'll fix it for you or take whatever action is needed. But this moves forward to getting the boards done and shipped to my house. And just a few days later, all the way to Canada, we received our DHL package. Everything came shipped really well. No issues with customs whatsoever. Really happy. And since this is their sixth anniversary, they put some swag in here for me as well. They gave me a little heads up that they were going to send me a little care package. It's just really nice of them. Send me a t-shirt, a few other goodies in here, some blinky lights and the whole bit. I actually like the t-shirt. Some cool maker rulers as well. These things are wonderful. They have the SMD footprints and all kinds of other guides on them. They're really handy to have on your workbench. And don't forget, if you're putting in an order for PCBs, they're 10 by 10 centimeter panels that you're buying. If you have the space unused, tack on some rulers too. 
And here is the good stuff. It's like Christmas every time when I get PCBs. These things look amazing. I hope the camera does them justice. The finish on them is just super shiny, super clear, tack sharp masks and just, just wonderful manufacturing. My design and layout definitely could be better, for, but for version 1, the very first PCB, and done in fritzing, I'm really happy with the results. These things I think will be completely serviceable, but we won't know till we start putting them together, so let's do that now. This is what I do. Your mileage may vary. I always take and lay things out, make sure the fit and finish is correct, make sure I had the footprints right before I get too invested in the project. You can do the same with yours. Uh, remember, the footprints don't always match the actual components from the EDAs, but in this case, mine are super straightforward. A pair of side cutters is essential in your electronics lab. They're great for trimming off these little mouse bites and leaving a nice smooth edge on the PCB. You can even sand it a little bit if you choose. The outside edge ones will be, will be smooth, but anything with the mouse bites is always going to have a little bit of an edge. Quick check to make sure I've got the actual layout correct for being able to put the components on it. Now I, I deliberately made this so I can stack them in multiple different ways but we need to make sure everything is gonna fit. Everything looks promising, so I go ahead and solder up the ESP8266 to the board directly in this case. You'll notice that I have the headers flipped around so the short side is closest to the board. That's to keep things really tight. Everything comes apart, looks promising. I think we should be able to assemble this all the way. Now here's our micro SD card holder. This is SPI interface. I decided to use the headers here, but we can also use ribbon cable for this and the LCD or any of the components. But later I'll, on the ground unit, I'll do this remote with a ribbon cable and attach it directly to the rescue board as well. No issues and solder the rest of the connections on our SD card interface. No problems here either. Our GPS interface has four wires, receive, transmit, power, and ground. We'll tin them up, ready to go. In this case, I just tack the wires to the top side of the board. This is on purpose so that I don't put them through the board so I can easily disconnect them from the top when the board is installed in the enclosure. They don't always need to be through the holes. You can just tack things on the top, a little bit of hot glue to hold it on. That way disassembly, reassembly is a lot easier, but it's up to you. Go ahead and solder the rest of the connections on the board for the Wemos D1 Mini, we're all set. Since this is a prototype, and yours might be too, I'd have to decide where to put the LCD, whether we're going to use some stackable headers or whether we're going to use ribbon cable. And in this case, I decided to stack it right on top. And the way I designed it, the pins are in order to do so on the top or bottom. You just flip it around. Well, in this case, I decided to make everything as compact as possible, that was the original plan, and use these extended long uh, stackable headers to just plug it right in. Solder these up and we should be good to go. Our OLED interface just has serial data, serial clock, power, and ground. So we'll go ahead and we'll put a stackable header right onto that too. That way we can just plug it into the other one. Easy peasy. Even if this prototype wasn't going into use, uh, I, I like going with the headers and everything easily removable because you never know. We haven't tested the board yet, so I'm not sure whether my design is right. If it ends up being wrong, this is super easy to break things apart, do bodge wires, do rerouting, no issues. 
Well, sometimes you get lucky. On Power Up, no problem. We have GPS working because we have a timestamp on there. We have clients and APs being registered. Everything powered up and is working. But now we have the problem that our 3D printed case is not going to be sufficient for this design. So off to figure out what we can do about this. Over on the Adafruit YouTube channel, sure enough, Noe and Adafruit had the answer. A full tutorial on how to do a snap fit and closure in Fusion 360 and it's parametric so we can resize it even for our ground station when we go to build that. And this was the end result. A few minutes, hours in Fusion 360, I was able to follow the tutorial to the letter and here's my design. You can follow the process or you can just use my files down below if you're building a similar thing. The box is parametric so you can just change the sizes and the user parameters to suit your application. It's absolutely wonderful. Into Cura to slice for my 3D printer. No problem. This is what it's going to look like on the build plate. We'll send it to the printer. I3 Mega spooled up with some black PLA. We'll see what we get. results were less than what I had hoped for. The infill pattern I chose left these vertical lines down the sides. Not terribly impressed with that, but we can see what we can work out for the, the sizing, make sure that it's going to work, and then maybe reprint this for a little bit better, a little bit smoother. This result, much better. Smooth outside, same infill percentage, same support, same everything, but much better looking product. We'll solder up a cable so that this can be fed power and ground. In this case, it's just a servo wire. We're going to be hooking this unit up to the flight control in the aircraft, but you can use whatever system you want. This case on the Wemos D1, I believe it's three to six volts DC in, but uh, you can always add another regulator or a different battery setup if you like. Feed the antenna connection out the side and nut it to the side of the enclosure. We're all set there. That'll hold our 2.4 gigahertz antenna on, no problem. Now, because I left all this extra wiring, because it's a prototype, uh, it's a little bit of a fight, a little bit of an exercise in physics to get it to sit into the enclosure. So I just mess around here until I get everything to fit. If I remove all the extra wires, things would be no problem, but I don't know that uh, whether I need those yet. So we'll just stuff everything in the case. Little dab of hot glue to hold things in place. And that should be pretty good. I found that there's no problems with putting the GPS inside the case with the air unit. There's no reception issues. I still got 13, 14 satellites, no problem. So I'm just going to leave it like that. Everything's a little bit more modular this way in one sealed package. I did do a few more iterations on, on 3D printed enclosures, uh, just minor changes in the sizing to suit the board and the GPS antenna and everything just a little bit better. I covered this in a previous video, but on this particular build, we have to uh, move a resistor that acts as a shunt to just acts, a, acts as a connection on the board in between from one contact to another to uh, enable the external antenna and disable the internal one. I did this under the microscope. Uh, I failed miserably to get it on camera, but I did a whole video on this and it's in the rescue unit playlist. Some minor layout changes, as with any design, we're going to have to work things out. And I think the antenna for the GPS facing this way will be best in the aircraft will stick this way will be up, or we can reverse it so that we can have the display facing out the bottom of the aircraft, yeah, whatever we like. And some vinyl stickers, and we are left with something that looks pretty cool. 
I couldn't be happier with how well this project is coming along. The form, fit, and function is looking pretty good. This unit is definitely way bigger than what it needs to be, but for a prototype, I think it's pretty good. Later, we can size it down as we desire and cut the weight and volume down significantly, but for a first proto, this, this is just wonderful. So this is moving the project forward. Quick test fit in the cargo bay of the Nano Talon? No problem. We could get this down in size a little bit more, uh, or we could make a custom bottom enclosure for it, which I think I might do when I add another camera to this, but uh, for now, pretty happy. Bottom cover fits, success. We win. Uh, for bench testing these things, I decided, well, I better have an easy power adapter. USB is just the simplest way, so I hacked up a USB cable, hook it up to a servo wire, now we have power. And surely someone will ask, this is our current draw. This is fully operational with GPS. Isn't that crazy? But remember, we're not transmitting with the ESP8266 radio. We're not hooking up to any Wi-Fi. We're just passively sniffing. So, wow, this, this should do the job. No significant impact to our battery consumption on our aircraft or quadcopter. No problems at all. So I think we can keep moving forward. Surely someone will ask about the weight. This is the current weight of this prototype, 41.4 grams, and that's with all the excess larger enclosure, all the wires, everything. We can get this to be much, much, much smaller, but for now, I think this will do the job. I designed this project so that the air unit can also be used as the ground unit. It's the same PCB. So I'm going to go forward and make a new revision of this PCB that includes some more connections for uh, the LoRa radio downlink system and just a little bit tiny different layout I think will be a little bit better. But we'll go ahead and do that in the next video. If you guys like this project, please consider clicking a thumbs up or follow the project on Hackaday or throw a comment down below if you've got some ideas. Yes, let me know. If you're interested in a circuit board, I will be providing those out to people. Uh, you can probably find them on my website right now at the time this video goes live. Cheers, guys. Good luck in all your projects.